Are we all switched on? Can everyone hear us? Oh, oh. Can everyone hear us without it being painful? Okay, good. Um, that was a joy. Thank you very much. Um, I think you have Peep Joe fans in the audience, so <laughs> safe crowd. Um, it's a bit it's bittersweet because it was completely lovely, but also if there's only five to go, and it's kind of also very sad. Um, how do you feel coming to the end of this? Um, well, <laughs> Don't say happy. It was, It'll boo it was you. Great. Thanks for enjoying it so much. That was great. Um, yeah. Yeah, it feels odd, but. We're still excited, really excited about the rest of the series. We're still, we're still working on it. We're still writing voiceovers for episodes five and oh, six. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh. It's, ni it's nice because some of the ideas in that show are like, uh, come from you know, things that Sam and I have talked to, to David and Robert for you know, uh, 12 years, for as long as we've been doing the show. We've had little bits that end up back in the show. And other bits like, uh, do you want to play capitalism? We wrote like, it feels like last week <laughs> in the edit. Yeah. So it's Line of the this episode. weird mixture of like, <laughs> ancient history and uh, yeah, brand new jokes. Yeah, so the, the, the obviously it's been three years nearly since we've seen it yeah. um, on our screens, but um, it's six months narratively since the end of, since yeah. Dobby going to New York and the end of the last series. Um, was it very important to you that they had to be still trapped in that amber, they had to stay exactly where they were, you couldn't do them three years down the line? We could have done, I guess it felt like we left them in quite interesting place so we wanted to explore that because, you know, when you drive them apart as much as we did last series, you want to sort of, we want to tell the story of how they got back together, which is that episode, basically. And uh, it looked like you'd reshot the opening titles, had you? No, no, no they've just used yeah. clips from other bits. Yeah. I don't think we've reshot the titles since we had to, they made us go back to Croydon once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those, in, those titles are like, that was I bitter. they're series six titles. Oh, series yeah. six, so I was going to say, yeah. it, it looks yeah. like you, you haven't aged, I mean, you haven't, clearly. Yeah. No, if uh, they were still <laughs> using the series one titles, that's... <laughs> yeah. That would be rough. But yeah, was, but there, obviously, there's, there's a huge continuity issue with, you know, six months, having to look like yeah. six months, but it's only three years. I mean, you'd had a baby, you got back into shape really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> you had to have a shave since your baby. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think if we'd made it three years down the line, that, that, would, that would have been an odd way for, it would make the last series, the fact that the last series is going out three years after the penultimate series mm -hmm. it, it isn't sort of, it, it would be a shame if that was relevant to the show, really. I, I think it's, it's, the last series is more of the, the same show. It's not a sort of coda. It's not a sort of separate a few years later thing. It's more of the same thing. And that's why they've got to come back together again, because that's the situation. That's what it's a sitcom about, those two men in that flat. And you I can think that was quite, a, to, for Sam and Jesse, that was quite an efficient 24 and a half minutes of getting people back together in that <laughs> yeah, flat. Yeah. Not the point, clearly the point of that episode was to get them back in the flat and... And yeah. that was a really funny way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but it's very kind of, obviously, it's very bittersweet, and you, you haven't finished making it completely yet. But um, it's kind of, was it tempting? Obviously, your schedules were just so busy for three years. You were making Babylon and Fresh Meat. But is it temp was it tempting to kind of just keep, keep pushing the date back that you started the last series, just because it's going to be so sad that it's going to finish? No, it was mainly busyness. We weren't sort of trying to postpone it. It was... We were, we were very keen to kind of try and make this as, as good a series as we could. We started writing it sort of over a year ago, didn't we? Trying to sort of give ourselves enough time to do it justice because we want to go out with a bang rather than a whimper, basically. But it's um, even, even just in three years, you know, things have changed so much culturally. Um, were you kind of aware w when you were writing it that sort of the world sort of, I mean, since, certainly since Peep Show started, you know, kids have been conceived, born, and taken their 11 pluses. It's kind of, you know, it's such <laughs> a different world now. But in your essentially still trying to make the same point in the same situation. Is it difficult to kind of keep that going 10 years, 12 years down the line? Yeah, I mean, this is obviously a very, I think everyone would agree, it's a very post-Arab Spring episode. I don't think you could imagine <laughs> that going. <laughs> it's inconceivable. The Guardian, <laughs> thanks you. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I think you feel that in the fabric of the piece, Julia. Somewhat, uh, uh, a critic like yourself would see that well, immediately. Spotted it straight there is, there yeah, is uh, yeah. this is not much of a spoiler, but in episode two, Mark does keep saying, um, uh, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing. What is it? You've, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear, yeah. um, which we've been hearing a lot of this week. <laughs> but obviously, yeah. by the time yeah. episode two goes out, you know, that'll look like, you know, that was written b b for a bad topical comedy um, <laughs> yes. that is three weeks out of date. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
not a bad topical comedy. It's a brilliant, timeless comedy. <laughs> the two are very, very easy to confuse. <coughs> um, Sorry, there's going to be some coughing. We're trying to shield our much. Julia's got a cough. Yeah. Yeah. Got She's a cough. just a human. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to take you back to the very, very, very beginning of Peep Show because it's really interesting, especially now. You invented Gogglebox because Peep Show kind of... Well, can you explain what I mean by that? Uh, yes, we didn't invent Gogglebox. <laughs> it's important to say that. They did, and they're very upset. In case any lawyers are in the room. Um, we, we, the original idea of... There are definitely lawyers in the room. <laughs> 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 and, look, it's a Guardian live event. <laughs> <laughs> is it worth just as a interjecting that although we'd be pleased with the tweet, it, yeah. it'd, be nice if, it'd be nice not to reveal, I guess there isn't that many plot points, but... No spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing about sleeping few spoilers. bag. Yeah. Save Possible. the sleeping bag. That's like the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. and also if you hated it, keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, back to the kind of original format, because yeah. when, it, when it was in development, it wasn't yeah. this at all, was no, it? No, the first idea, the germ of the show was the producer, Andrew kind of came to us and said, well, I want to do a Beavis and Butterhead style show with two guys talking over TV clips. And Mission and Web, the guys Channel 4 want to do it, and we already knew them and worked with them, so... We were cheaper than animation. <laughs> <laughs> At that wow, point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the brief was to come up with, like, another half of the show that would fit in with their clips. So the, the pilot we shot back in... 2002, was it, or one, or whatever, was um, sort of a, a lot of clips, a lot of chatting over TV clips, as well as the sitcom that we sort of now know as the show. I'd like to see that. I bet it's almost exactly like Gogglebox, but slightly funnier. Well, we, we, couldn't, we, uh, we couldn't put it on YouTube or anything, because there's lots of songs and things, which, and clips we've got aren't clearable. Like, for example, issue? it was the episode where Mark leaves that phone message for Sophie, saying, I like you. <laughs> the, song we, the song we originally used was, I just called to say, I like you. <laughs> but we, Stevie Wonder wouldn't let us use it. So Seriously? Yeah, yeah. So right, no one by his record. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, um, there's something about, I mean, you know, lots of sitcoms have been based around the, the dis, is it unlikable, dislikable, the, the, not, the, the odd couple, and both, both of your characters obviously are, you know, they're arseholes, they're not very yeah. good people. Yeah, oh God, yeah. And, you know, cowardly and <laughs> self-obsessed, and, you know, why, why do we, it seems to be a specifically British thing, why do we like sitcoms about idiots, and <laughs> unpleasant <laughs> idiots are that? Because nice people aren't very funny. <laughs> um, no. I mean, uh, and they, uh, I mean, their, their thing is that they, that they're, they're redeeming thing. I think that why we identify with them at all is that they feel like they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they always think that someone else is in the mainstream and they're all, they've all got it right, and we're just in our weird peripheral puddle. And we, and I think everybody feels like that sometimes. But, but, but the challenge is definitely you're right that these on paper these two men are shits, <laughs> um, so it's a question of making them you know, watchable enough that you want to keep watching them, um, even though they're behaving extremely badly. It's men behaving badly. Um, <laughs> but Shit, they've, it but is. They've been, <laughs> but they've been to university. <laughs> the lawyers, lawyers, the whole audience. That's, yeah, that's going to be quoted again and again now. Bad luck. Um, it's nothing of the kind. It's nothing <laughs> of the kind. But in terms of, in terms of the, I mean, it's very much, it, it's sort of like a lot of, uh, Ab Fab is very similar. They kind of do all the awful things that you don't ever do. So, so watching them is pleasurable. It's a cathartic in a way, I suppose. But um, in terms of when you're actually doing the show and, and all the way through, um, it's, it always says additional material by you guys. Obviously, you write it. Um, how, how does that actually work? Well, we do, lots of, we do a bunch of plotting, and then we invite Dave and Robert to come and hear our sort of, like, this is what we think the shape of the series is. And so we get quite a lot of input at that point of, like, you know, big, if, there, if, there's, if there's anything big that concerns them, like, oh, I'm not sure Jeremy or Mark would do that. Um, it's not a huge, there's not, you don't hugely stick your oar in. I don't think we've ever, yeah, I can't remember a time we sit it's there with our big wouldn't. cigars going, no, my character wouldn't do that. <laughs> 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 so they sit silently with their big cigars. Uh, um, uh, but, but, but we do have a lot of fun at that point, and so we get ideas at that point, and, um, and then after the read-throughs a bit, too. But in terms of filming, is it locked? It's, it's once it's, not, start it's largely like it's not. Yeah. I mean, when we do read-throughs and things, there's room for suggestions and changes and that sort of thing. When you're actually filming, it, you, it's a 
filming things POV is a stupid way to film things. <laughs> it's mu much harder to do than Sorry. the normal way of filming. <laughs> and, and yes, I mean, it, we have, it has never, it could not be clearer to me after all these years <laughs> why no other program is filmed like that. <laughs> um, but as a, re as a result, you sort of are locked into the script. You can't, you can't cut any corners in the filming of it. So, so you, you've got to, the scene you, you start the day filming has to be the same scene as the one you finished. So there's no use when you've got one shot to go, thinking, oh, wouldn't it be funny if he said this? It's too late. And also, even with a, a conventionally filmed thing, and even with a sketch show, sometimes, you know, you get bored with your own jokes, <coughs> and, you go, and you throw something different in, and the crew laugh, and you think, oh, oh, good, let's do that instead. Mm. And actually, no, just remember why you thought it was funny in the first place, and even though you've done eight takes of it, and uh, you just have to, you know, remember why you thought it was funny. Um, about your own confidence, really. Yeah, it's also, it worries me when things start changing too much on set, because everyone on set is overtired, so that they're not <laughs> thinking as clearly <laughs> as <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when, no, exactly, yeah. and, no. and you can absolutely sort of go, oh, oh look, there's a, there's a hilarious beach ball, let's get that in. It <laughs> doesn't quite work with the story. Now we're in the edit. Is there any way of cutting around the beach ball? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in every shot. <laughs> But just in terms of, because I know in the early days you, um, there was some filming with actual, there were helmets, right? Yeah. With sort of That's forehead right. mounted cameras. Did, yeah. Has that petered out altogether? Is it something you just decided didn't really work? Um, it was basically, yeah, we lost the helmet cams because the, the, the cameras weren't good quality enough and now it's mostly shot with a sort of handheld camera and a brilliant camera. Um, camera operator. Do you Nick. use the same crew again and again because they obviously sort of have your we style? We try to. Nick yeah, well Martin. We, Nick Martin is a camera operator which is crucial and we've, you know, Becky Martin has done no six, her sixth series and so we, we're, she, she knows how to do it very well and she's a key collaborator. You know, we, we trust her very much on set and very much in the edit and we couldn't do it without her. Yeah. Um, Nick, Nick's an excellent height as well. <laughs> he was, he's a very good height. He has to put a, a thing on his shoulder to be super hands because <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt King's bit taller than me and David. Um, okay. But the, the low point with the helmet cams uh, that we used quite a lot in series one was uh, a scene where we were driving around Croydon. And I was driving, there was no low light. It's not, sometimes when you, when, you, when you do a driving scene, the car is on a truck and the truck is driving and you're just pretending. But this was me driving a car <laughs> with the helmet cam on, <laughs> doing my lines and filming David. <laughs> and then the note came back you know, after 15 minutes of doing this round and round Croydon, you don't, you keep not quite catching David because you, <laughs> because on his line, you keep looking forward instead of back David. It's, it's, it's probably because I'm trying to drive a fucking car. <laughs> without, and I'm sort of <laughs> so that was, that was, uh, yes, the early budget days. Yeah. <laughs> Before also you realised that you could go like this with the hat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like do it twice, that once like a, that, that and once like that, yeah. and then the magic of cutting. <laughs> but nobody thought of that. <laughs> not, not, not me. We have broken. We have broken a couple of cameramen. One camera guy on series two was saying to me at one point, "I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing." I was like, "If you turn the writer out, we're really in trouble." <laughs> Basically, yeah. It's, it's Seriously, so it's quite demanding for some people who yeah. are disciplined. We've never had the first uh, uh, first AD twice, have we? A no. first assistant director. We, we get through them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all burn out. Oh my God. Notorious in the TV industry. Um, obviously, being, you, know, you guys being in this show has obviously made you wildly famous now. Um, and you, you, know, you're, you, you meet people on the street, I imagine, quite a lot. And I think, I guess, because each show's been off the screen for three years, maybe this hasn't happened much in the intervening time. But what's the thing? What's the John Cleese walk or the David Brent dance that when it, do, do, do people see you and go, do the thing, do the thing, or do you do not get that kind of that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking. Can you all do it? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, that's terrifying. <laughs> Christ. It's like Radio Gaga. <laughs> 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 all we hear is. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's you don't get. You don't get that reference, most of you. Um, <laughs> is there anything you'd like them to do? No, no. Um, people occasionally shout. Uh, it ought shout to be that, but it, it doesn't really happen. No. I've had people shout, clean shirt. <laughs> There's a t shirt down the front saying, I'm with clean shirt. Well done, good work that one. Yeah. Um, nothing, nothing no, apart that, I think that's our only catchphrase, really, and, and, yeah, and, and it's sparingly it. used, thank mm. God. And it was, it, was, it was good to use it, I think, to jog our memories, to use it in episode one of this series. It just was, you know, 
that I think I think the faithful appreciate it. Which? Yeah. They're using the, the LD oh, brothers, using good. that. Good. I'm Is it in episode it. one? Yeah. Did we just say, yeah, oh, no, right. you, 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 you mentioned, you brought them back in, you mentioned that the LD brothers trumped the... Oh, the LD brothers, brothers, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the boing, okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the, the slightly, um, I suppose almost a, in, in commercial terms, the dubious pleasure of having created a cult show, like a hugely successful, but never a cult show. Is that, I mean, is that some, does that annoy you, or are you just delighted that the people who love it love it as much as they do? The latter, because it's, I mean, it's, it, uh, and I think... I think the people who like the show are sort of comedy fans l like we were before we were into comedy. And, and also I think very good looking. I mean, the <laughs> and you, the way, you know, that people ardently get into a show that they really like is, is yeah, is what, is what I think the, the, thing, the thing we would have, would, have, would have aspired to when we started making it. And um, the, it's, it's happened a couple of times, well, a lot of times with, um, with a successful cult British show, especially the very idi idiosyncratically British ones, like the IT crowd and stuff. Um, they've tried to make Peep Show America, haven't they? There's been and a in fact, you've been sort of involved as well. Not, not ish, so much. Sort of. Um, and they're, they're, they're possibly trying to do it again. Why do you think they can't quite get it right over there? I think they, they could. It's just every uh, shows are ones that work are rare, and you need to get everything working together. The people who are writing it, brilliant casting, uh, great director and editing, and you need everything to sort of come together. And usually, it doesn't anywhere. And sometimes it does with a, a, for, a, a format that's been changed like it did with the American office. And usually it doesn't. And I think they could do it again. There's, I, I think you know, there's lots of Americans who like great, great comedy. Uh, maybe there's something in, about Mark and Jeremy not being at all successful in their lives. People say yeah. um, Americans like success. I don't know. Um, but Is it too British, Sam? Is it just that well, the way we socially interact doesn't quite match them, and that's, I'm that's trying to imagine the American mission web and failing because <laughs> you know they are. S we wrote the parts for them, yeah. So it's that's the challenge, you know. How yeah. do you recast that? I mean, I guess it's possible, but it's not easy. Yeah. Um, so now it's it's kind of all. I mean, when do you actually finish? You, when's the actual the edit, everything, the the, the, the voiceover finish? A couple finish? of weeks. How do you think you're going to feel when it really is the end? That when this is the circus has all gone and. I, th I think a bit like it's a bit like grief in that now it's yeah. all quite exciting and we're all seeing each other a lot at the peep show funerals. But when it's well, I think I will be really sad when it's over. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah. I'll be less sad if it's a good series. That's what we're mostly focusing on, making it good. Yes, I suppose you're still there, aren't you? Yeah. I think the reception tonight may indicate that. These guys are all drunk and lawyers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone here not a drug lawyer? <laughs> no, none of you. <laughs> 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 so, um, the, the flat, um, uh, Mark's flat, is, is a very important um, kind of almost character in the sitcom, and the fact that you, you always end up back there, it's kind of the trap, the prison that keeps you there. Um, but I understand they've, it's now, it's gone, it's been well, burned, smashed, dismantled. It's, it was the, that was the saddest bit about, the, yeah. about filming that series. The, the, we normally do the, 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 there's a couple of weeks in the middle of the shoot where we do the, all the flat stuff uh, on a set. And usually you know that it's going into storage and this time we knew it was not. Um, so that was sad when we finished that. I think it's been recycled to use in a, in a different comedy. Well, there may yeah. be some, there may be some people be. Who, who, who watch mainly for the set. <laughs> they, they should know that it will be appearing in another sitcom. I think. Well, do keep us informed. Do we know, do we know what it is? Is it not called Witless? Oh, it is. There Witless. is a real Witless. So if you really love okay. the set, it will come gift round again. Gigs, isn't it? Watch out, watch yeah. out for that piece of wood. Watch out for that piece of wood. Totally <laughs> repainted and the doors moved. Yeah. And yeah. I have to point out at this point that the actual flat, which was a real flat the for the first yeah. two series, yeah. that is still there yeah. in yeah. Croydon, and there'll be someone living in it, if you can imagine anything. If you can imagine something. probably don't watch people. Yeah. Yeah, it would be upsetting, I suppose, if you sort of suddenly realised you were you were living. You know, if you watch television, you go, "That's here." <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, I read a thing. I know. I sent a press release the other day about um, the real time value of sitcom, like the London properties that appeared in sitcoms, and apparently Mark's investment relatively to the rest of the sitcom universe was appalling, and you yeah. only made sixty grand. Sorry. M Mark did. Yeah, apparently. That's so <laughs> typical. <laughs> he, can't, he can't even ride the, the <laughs> London property <laughs> wave no, properly. No, 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 no. That's very pleasing. Yeah. yeah, it's well no, chosen, it's I think. Yeah, well um, did any of you take anything from the set just to, you know, 
I think everyone took something. Oh, yeah, take? Matt yes. King, who plays Superhands, took, took the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Needed a sofa, yeah, and they were going. Yeah, we, we don't need this sofa anymore. <laughs> the, the creamy elephant, the big white sofa, and uh, he yeah. got a man with a van to turn up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Men with van. It was just. It was one man with a van, <laughs> uh, and um, and he took the sofa. I took the um, Jeremy's uh, poetry exercise book. Uh, that contains, it's amongst, amongst other yeah. things, that that person who is in the art department that series had scribbled, um, fuck you, Bush. <laughs> uh, you weren't even properly elected, Bush. Are you happy now, <laughs> Bush? <laughs> Etc. So that's, I, that's what I've got. I might open it on that page and frame it, or just probably more, more, more in keeping with the show, just leave it lying around <laughs> in the room I laughably call my study. <laughs> and what about you? Could you take I have a picture from the wall of Mark's bedroom of a vintage car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it, yeah. The okay. thing I think everyone wanted, and I think that Becky Martin, the director, took, was the, uh, the biscuit, to the sort uh, of yeah, the horse, horse biscuit tin yeah. from on no, top of... Oh, you've, no, you've I, I got it. That, uh, I'm afraid. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's another way out of here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, it makes a, you put batteries in it, and it, yeah, it makes a noise of a horse. It never, I don't think that's fabulous. Yeah. What about you guys? What did you I got uh, Jeremy's bongo <laughs> nice. and Mark's FDR doll. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse, what about you? We, I've got the uh, um, cookie just jar, which sounds like quite a sore point. Which is, there's yeah. going to be a fight after. <laughs> Was it just that or? Uh, no, I got a Genghis Khan as well in the same range. Nice, uh, very nice. <laughs> um, and obviously the Peep Show, and I, I understand most of the um, supporting cast you've played are coming back for this series, so we mm -hmm. know Olivia Colman's coming back because the lovely pictures of her crying. And, um, and obviously Superhands um, and various others. Uh, do you have, I mean, it's hard to pick favourites, do you have favourite incidental or supporting or sort of characters that aren't in every episode that, what's your favourite? Could you pick one? I could. Okay, great. Start with I'd you. pick Superhands, I guess, because yeah. he, he's in five out of six episodes, and yeah. he's in the most episodes, so I think he gets the prize, and he's just a joy to write for, and Matt's so brilliant. Where did he come from? Because you, did you write, you didn't write it for Matt, did you? Or? No, no. Uh, originally, so we had Danny Dyer in mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Whole different show. <laughs> I've said this before, this is the public record. <laughs> it <worry>. is now. <laughs> um, it, that would have been a different experience <laughs> making that show. <laughs> yeah. Is it the public record who, who auditioned for Yeah, Super Russell Hands? Brand oh. auditioned yeah. for uh, that um, part also. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Matt is super hands and always will be. Yeah. And is quite brilliant. But in terms of the two of you, I'm not, I, I don't see super hands in either of you, so is he... Really? So, well, I mean, you obviously, with your drug habit and your, you know, but um, no, but how... We, so we, I think we thought this guy, of a guy who'd write, make up his own nickname, a kind of, sort of, really wide and kind of worrying, but not really quite as, you know, there's that episode where he, Jeremy goes and works with him in a, in a record, uh, a recording studio, mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he's actually really good at getting the lattes and getting the right skim milk, <laughs> so he's kind of, we always knew there was a bit of a... Yeah a fake level to him as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, the very first idea of him was Dutch, right? That's why he's called that. And we did audition right. a Dutch guy. Right. And then he was sort of like, well, we don't want to go Dutch. That's um, <laughs> so let's just go Matt King. OK. And um, favourite character? Have you, he's Nick the best one, I think. Or no, or Johnson. Johnson's mine. <laughs> I'll take Johnson. I don't, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. It, it feels invidious to... Uh, no, I mean, it doesn't. They're not here. They don't care. Well, Tell so us. I think um, some people are here. But... Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I couldn't, I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't. You didn't pick one. No. What about you guys? Should, we go, should we go for one of the one episode ones? Yeah, like someone who um, do a scene with. There's Gog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gog, Gog was a lot of fun. And there was um, uh, the character played by Steve Edge, uh, who turned out to be a oh, Nazi. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark, Mark makes a friend. Who yeah. was it? Darren. Yeah. Darren. Yeah. And um, Steve Edge, plays brilliant performance. the core anglaise. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Plays the core anglaise. <laughs> And, um, and it turns out it's all joshing, and then he turns out to be thrillingly right wing. Yeah. Um, and of course, Mark is broken hearted. Don't you? And Mark has to make this really tortured speech about, I mean, I have a dream, and that's all fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's got the limits of Mark's PC. Yeah. It's, very, it's very funny. Yeah. Um, 
but we, we saw that the aforementioned, you know, that some of the tearful pictures from the set uh, as you were coming to the end of shooting. Um, is uh, genuinely, you're going to be sad to see this go, aren't you? Do you all know? Well, mm. unless there's a film, I'm looking for twitches, yeah. or a musical, or a musical, <laughs> which I think would work yeah. brilliantly. Um, you know, this is there, there'll be a good old gap before you get to see these boys again if you ever do. Yeah. So, you know, what's what are you going to miss the most about them, or about the experience? Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. That, I mean, it won't be the early mornings. Nothing. It won't, it won't be that. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to say nothing because it's going to be very weird. It's, yeah. it's been. I mean, the weird uh, thing is, uh, yeah. on, on, on the one. Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, well, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to say. Good, but right. I, I, I think I. <laughs> yeah. Because but it would, it would definitely have been something. I wasn't yeah, just going to peter out. I think, I think I sensed that you were going to talk until you found a point. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as you know, I can't just think of it while I'm not talking. <laughs> no, 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 that's what we do. That's why, because we dress identically, that's why I know you so well. Um, oh, basically, uh, now I've lost my point. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we haven't done it for three years anyway. So we've sort of been living in a no peep show world for a while, and it's not that bad. But you knew um, and on, and on the other, and on, we knew it was coming back. Yeah. And on the other hand, we still haven't finished. As Sam just said, yeah. we still haven't done the voiceovers for episode yeah. five and six. So, uh, like you say, we're going to the funerals, but we haven't really suffered the loss yet. <laughs> so it, it'll You're be not acceptance. We're not. We're, in de <laughs> we're I'm fully like, in denial. We, I'm we're still, we're still, still denial. on. We're still on holiday. Yeah. You know, we still got dinner yeah. on the last night. No. So you know, yeah. Yeah. we're not stuck. We refuse to start packing. That's che <laughs> that's cheerier than the funeral yeah, metaphor, yeah. really. And in fact, um, it's sort of in between. It's a sitcom ending. Yeah. It's more serious than the end of a holiday, but not as serious as a person dying. So. <laughs> it depends who died. <laughs> and not, and not <laughs> yeah, some people die. Doesn't matter yeah. a shit. Um, yeah, so it's it's difficult to say. Is what I think yeah. we're. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the thing is that, that, that you, I mean, it, 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 we've loved doing this show. We're yeah. very proud of it. It's, the, you know, the biggest part of our career, and it probably always will be, and that's, you know, we're very proud of it. Um, but the other thing that makes it really weird uh, coming to the end of it is it, it's been... <laughs> It's been 12 years, yeah. and, and you, you think you can't think, we can't think about the show without also thinking about the 12 years, and you think about, that's a big section of our time alive, yeah. and it, you think about life and ageing and the human condition in a much <laughs> bigger way than, than you mean to, just <laughs> with the end of the <laughs> yeah, I'm no, going to <laughs> die. <by laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's like a live episode. Um, <laughs> a live episode? We could do a live episode. Well, actually, it's still this. Fucking hell, why do we just do it live all the time? It's not over. No, There's still the ice cream on the way to the airport. Save all that writing and rehearsing. <laughs> Maybe if, if we carry on making a show, you won't die. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Oh, that that's is that true. Is, it's immortality yeah. through... It's worth a try. Let's really. right. um, <laughs> 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 yeah. do it. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. It's like flatliners. Um, so, um, obviously, people will always ask you about, will there be a film? It's like the end of Down Downton Abbey. People can't accept the end. It has to be... But, no, it's not dead, is it? Um, but, I mean, there is obviously potential. I'm assuming you've, you've kind of said there's no happy endings and no one dies. So we know these characters will still exist somewhere. Um, Will there be a kind of whatever happened to the peep show lads when they're old and Older. where will they be? <laughs> Ten years' time, what are Mark and Jeremy doing? Like, where are they? Well, we, we've, we, we, we've said that we'd like to think about that if David Robb were available and was uh, up for it in that Oh, they'll be time. available. And alive. <laughs> and not yeah. alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know that about David. They're going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't die. Um, yeah, we'd be up for it. not to. Yeah. Yeah. But love. I think we'd love to yeah, sort definitely. of find see what they were doing in well, actually, 10 I want, years I want time to ask you two, what can you what do you imagine maybe would have happened considering the cyclical nature of their despair and they can't seem to escape it where will they be in 10 years i can't help thinking they've got to be in the same flat doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I, maybe not maybe not i don't know yeah i, d I don't know I, it's very difficult to that, that's one of the reasons i think that that the you know the show it's right that the show's ending really is in the, it's about men in their 20s early 30s post university and it's a different situation when they're in their 40s and yeah. um, it was uh, getting too sad yeah. really. <laughs> but I, th I think if, <laughs> I, I, th <laughs> I think if mark doesn't if if nothing you know if mark's career doesn't take off in some tedious direction that he wants i, I he might cash in his albeit 
not brilliant uh, investment in London property equity <laughs> and sort of go and uh, you know, live somewhere where the property's tr cheaper yeah. on the change. I can't see him staying in London. Yeah. I would like to see them in a half-built hotel in Mallorca <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> super yeah. hands running the kitchen. <laughs> um, going, it oh, no, bloody <laughs> thing. Bloody so thing. if carry it comes on. back, it has carry to come on back holiday. as a totally different genre. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> POV, yeah. carry on holiday. Studio audience. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> crazy, mad stuff's happening. <laughs> <you know? laughs> People clap when we come in. Yeah. yeah. Like the Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm in. I'd like to see that. I would. I think everyone else would here would too. Um, but in terms of the, um, the world of Peep Show, it's a very... It's that, that sort of tone you set early on, it's kind of... I think other, other sitcoms have probably tried to borrow from it a little bit, but I think it coming back has sort of reminded me how distinctive it is. And in terms of other writers, you know, you've only... There are very few. Is it two? There are three. There are three, three writers you've ever kind of let take the reins. In fact, I think one of them is in here tonight. John Brown. John Brown wrote some fresh meat as well. He's a very clever man. Clap him. Clap him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also um, Simon Blackwell and... Tom Basden. Yeah, Tom Basden. Um, what, how did you identify that they could get the voice that they would know how to take these characters? They're just brilliant in? writers. And we'd worked with them all and knew how good they were. And so it wasn't hard to pick those three. They're all brilliant, really. But what's the kind of conversation like when you, you know, when you sit down with them and say, Ta here, take our, take our babies? What, how do you kind of describe to them what you want them to do, or do you just well, trust we have, them? We yeah. have quite a, you know, we, as I said, when we tell David and Rob what we think the shape of the series is, we have quite a clear idea. So then we say and to John, look, there's a spot here in the, in the arc of the series, and so they need to end up roughly here, and this is where they start out, and these are some maybe some areas, and then... Could you come up with a plot that would, would fit into that jigsaw puzzle? But they, but the voice is just entirely down to them. The voice of, the, of writing. As in, they, it's, it's almost a, it's almost a job of kind of copying how style, isn't it? But it's sort yeah, of. I mean, it's uh, more than that. It, yeah, uh, uh, but you know, I think once you've got people to write for yeah. and you know characters, it's it's um, it's it's. Uh, Turns out, if you have really good writers, they can they can do it. Yeah. yeah sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as well as you, if not. No, I won't say better. But no, they're, they're very good. But um, Simon Blackwell, talking with him, mm. you're going to come up now. But what can you tell us anything about the show you're doing with him? Because your next sort of piloty project together, as you two, is with Simon Blackwell, who wrote Veep and The Thick of It, and is a genius. And um, what what is it? And can you say anything about it? Well, it's <laughs> it's a sitcom. Uh, da, da, and da. Uh, <laughs> I think the two things about it are that it's a sitcom and it's not definitely going on television. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, more we, kind of, the more yeah. we kind of talk about this sitcom like yeah. it exists, yeah. the more you sort of think, but if Channel 4 hear that we're talking about this sitcom that exists, yeah. they might go, well, that's all very fucking well. <laughs> yes. We haven't commissioned a fucking sitcom. Yeah. So, you know, there's a pilot script, um, yeah. which is very good. Okay. Um, and no they, ma they may or may not make a pilot, and they may Run or may not do it. Um, <laughs> oh they're no, I'm not. I mean, we're I think not say what the no, is. they're both aliens. No, they're not. They're firemen. <laughs> One of them's a fireman. The other one's no. gay female yeah. Geordies. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> um, but no, no, we sort of it's it, it's it's that awkward thing it's we don't know if it'll happen we, we hope it does so we, we don't want to yeah. go on about it but is yeah. that and obviously that's one thing obviously he's writing and you're hoping will happen what else are you two up to next well we we, we started we started writing uh, we started writing a web series I oh mean, yeah not, not, not <laughs> <laughs> one, one b that's but going, also two b's that's going back a bit yeah um but yeah. we haven't finished that, writing that okay. fizzled so. out yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're taking an yeah, artistic yeah. pause. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, well, you're going to be doing bits and bob. You're in yeah, I'm, I'm in a, yeah, I'm playing Shakespeare in a sitcom oh, about Shakespeare. Right. This is Ben yeah. Elton's new yeah. thing. That's um, filming in the new year. Oh, exciting. And, and that's yeah. a series. That's, that's happening. A, that's, yeah, that's, that's happening and yeah. is and a in, studio sitcom. I'm in Ab Fab the movie playing um, Safi's um, boyfriend. Her, her, her bath. <laughs> Her baffled detective inspector boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's so amazing. I'm a, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a policeman. Um, and have you filmed that yet? I'm, we're doing it now. Um, how, how I, is I that? Did, it's weird because I'm sort of number seven on the call sheet, which is outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> which is like, so it just, it just means I, which means I'm not in it much. Um, <laughs> Did you see a which basically means great trailer. <laughs> oh no, great. Yeah, great, much better than Peep Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie. Everyone gets very excited. Um, but I've done, I've done a few days, and I'll do some more next week, and then 
Uh, I don't know when it finishes, but, um, but yeah, that'll, that'll be out next year. Cool. Um, and I'm writing a book, uh, but apart from You're that. You're writing a book. <laughs> I'm, writing a book. <laughs> I'm writing a proposal for a book. What's, what's the, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm writing a book as well. Um, what's, a, what's, your, what's your book? It's a funny memoir about masculinity, about how I wasn't very good at being a boy. I like the sound um, of <laughs> And uh, I thought I'd finished the proposal. 10,000 words. I'm really putting some effort in. The proposal. I gave it words. to my literary oh. agent, and he said, if you make this 15% funnier, we'll get more money. <laughs> Which is all very fucking well. <laughs> <laughs> but 15% funnier. I mean, what a note to give. <laughs> Every 15 words is trifle. <laughs> the question is, will you get 15% more money? I think 15% I, funnier. Well, I, just hope, I hope what he meant was there would be a disproportionate. You get like 50% more yeah, money. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Depends where we start. <laughs> anyway, that is my by no means. I'm sorry, my. Emphasising the money aspect of it. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very intimate and passionate project, mm. but, um, which I've got to make funny for cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, we're going to throw open to some audience questions. I'm sure you're all like really keen to ask some stuff. But I just wanted to find out what you two are doing next. Before you've been very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing to tell you. I've got some things that are in development. You but can't speak about nothing any really. I can announce. And is it? Are you carrying on together, having a little break, and are you well, going we'll to see how it goes? <laughs> no, yeah, we are. Right. We just haven't been haven't been writing anything other than this for about a year, apart from Fresh Meat, which is out right. next year. Fresh Meat. Oh yes, when is it in in, in Don't know. The new year, okay. But it will be out. We have filmed it. It does exist. Good, that's that's a good thing to take home. Um, well, um, let's thank um, uh, Rob, David, Sam, and Jesse very much uh, with a clap. And then we'll <laughs> moving among you in the usual fashion with microphones um, if they're around. I can't really see. Um, but if you have a question, please shove your hand in the air, um, wave it around, and, um, and they will come to you. Any questions now? Um, this young man down the front here is looking nervous, but I think he should open things up. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Um, I'm really curious to know in the episode where you have like the New Year's Eve episode, what was going on in Super Hans's apartment? <laughs> <laughs> that was so horrific <laughs> <laughs> that it put him on his ass. <laughs> well, I mean. We did, of course, film that, <laughs> uh, but then it was too horrible to show yeah. on television. It's really, too really bad. Too many laws bad. were broken. Yeah. Um, um, no, it's no, it's, it's nothing, is it? So that's not the whole point. The whole point is, it, it's the worst thing you could I just, possibly imagine. I just was curious to know what the worst thing would be in your guys' opinions. I think I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not if anyone who can't imagine something too bad to actually say <laughs> is an unimaginative person. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Is that it? The code of silence. Legs cut off as usual by David Mitchell. I can't really follow that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not allowed. He said we can't say. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's It'll true. Be wrong. If, if you're thinking of that, the, the worst thing. Exactly. You wouldn't say that. <laughs> not the worst thing. What you'd say is like something a few stages, you know, the exactly. civilised side of the yeah. worst thing. We could really bring everyone down if you said the worst the thing. The worst oh, thing. I won't say that. The worst thing might not be very funny. I won't say that. Yeah. All right. Right, I couldn't say the, the third Sorry. worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question, please. <laughs> Can't see. Um, yes, that, that chap in the middle there is about three rows in the back. Uh, yeah, what were you eating? It was supposed to be a dog, and that was. Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was turkey. <laughs> but it had hairs. Yes, lovingly put on by the art oh. department. Uh, uh, I don't know what the hairs were. I'm hoping just bits of, I don't know. Oh, turkey hair off. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, it, was a, it, was a, it was a big turkey leg. It did. We, uh, went, uh, I think one of the interviews you did, was it Shortlist Magazine or someone, did a kind of top ten moments, memorable moments, yeah. and the audience did vote for eating mummy. Yeah, ever. it's difficult. <laughs> I mean, there are, there, are, there are so many great bits, um, but it is... It, it, Yes, it, it's pretty memorable, isn't it? Um, yeah. 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 Fair dues. I'm not going to argue Oops. with them. 
yeah. It's a, Whose it's idea a, was it to call the dog Mummy, by the way? Uh, yours, because you had a cat called Mummy. You Correct. had a cat called Mummy. <laughs> we, my family had a cat, yeah, okay. had a lot of kittens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Not but slutty <laughs> Mummy. <laughs> Easy tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said naughty, slutty um, Okay, and so next question. Who has a, a microphone? Easy Tiger would also be a good name for a promiscuous cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you have a microphone, um, just wave it at me. Brilliant. Okay, okay, you know. And then, sir, you at the back, keep aside your hand up. You're next. Okay, perfect. Cool. Okay, yes, what's your question? Hi, everyone. Um, not so much a question, but. Uh, David, well. can you call me a piss kidney, please? <laughs> can I call you a can, what? Can you just call me a piss kidney? <laughs> piss, piss kitten? Piss no, kidney. no, piss, piss kidney. Piss kidney, of course. Yeah, like, yes, like, yeah if you want to get some yeah. um, um, I, I, only, I only said that once years ago. And so that's so, that's um, fine. Yeah, you, you piss kidney. <laughs> Do you think I could get work in panto just doing that? <laughs> <laughs> go in at the, go on at the beginning of the second half. Say piss kidney. <laughs> piss kidney. Yeah, it could become a tradition like buttons. <laughs> I like to hear that question on Question Time. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fact, they used to film Question Time in this uh, in this theatre. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, yes, gentleman at the back with a beard. What's your question? Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say you guys are alive and well in Canada. Thank you. Thank and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, uh, when you guys started the first season, did you imagine it would go on this long for 12 years? Uh, I d yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you outlasted Seinfeld in runtime. <laughs> No, I think we, uh, you know, we hoped it would go on for a long time. We wanted it to, we definitely wanted it to go on for a long time. But I think if we would, we weren't ever. Man, we were, we, I think we, me and Sam had worked on sitcoms that were pulled during the run. Like they didn't <laughs> even make it to the end of the, not all the episodes that were filmed went out. So we were, we were really sweating. I mean, I remember, because uh, this is just the time when people start previewing the show. I remember sweating about what the Guardian Guide would say about the first <laughs> episode. And did you um, do? Were you at the Guardian Guide then? I probably was, but I don't think I. You did weren't allowed to review things. So we. No, it, was, it would have been. Yeah. If someone had said you were going to do nine series and be interviewed in front of lots of people who would be able to quote bits quote and wear T-shirts, yeah. it would be like, so. you fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you smoking? Yeah. 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 It, it, it was a yeah. I mean, in our wildest dreams. Gone very well. Well done, everyone. Ult ultimately, you don't get a show like Peep Show coming from a group of people who are who would be that optimistic about. <laughs> shows. You know, it's, it's, it would be a bit, uh, people who start a show thinking it'll go to nine series make very different sorts of shows. <laughs> it would be. It, yeah, it would yeah. be called shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a bad title, actually. Yeah. Okay, who it's has another time. question? If you have a microphone, can you wave it at me? It's quite hard to see. Who has a microphone already? No. Just because I don't want to pass people by who've just been given a microphone. Okay, go on. Hello, okay, good evening. Okay, yeah. uh, this is specifically to David, um, and I want a specific answer, if possible, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> how much washing up do you think you could do without any washing up liquid? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose the, the honest answer is an infinite amount, not very effective. <laughs> Thank you, that's it, I can go home now. Are you happy with that? Very. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, this young lady down here, I think, was next. Do wave wildly, because it's quite hard to see you right here. Do it yeah. okay. Oh, you got it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Okay, um, so the characters were obviously written for you guys and it's a kind of dynamic that is quite similar to a lot of the stuff that you guys have done that you've written for each other. Has being in Peep Show changed the way you write, you've written for yourselves in like sketch shows and things? I think you might be, um, what, I don't know if this is what you meant, but what springs to mind is the, when we had a sketch show, uh, there was a sort of behind the scenes thing where we talked to each other sort of as ourselves. And we found ourselves falling into that um, sort of ready-made groove of the one who worries too much and the one who doesn't worry enough. 
Uh, and so we started doing sort of, a, I mean, it wasn't Mark and Jeremy, it was very much us, but, it, but it, that was the sort of dynamic. And so we definitely pinched that um, <laughs> from Peep Show, I suppose. Did we? No, because we would already pinched you, you from yourself. You'd pinch so us. you're allowed. Yeah. It'd be okay. very we, unfair we, if you weren't allowed to we use stole, yourself. We stole again. us. We yeah. stole us back yeah. briefly, and then the show got cancelled, and then you stole us back. Again. <laughs> now I don't know who I am. <laughs> you're Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. <laughs> okay. Yes. Please. What's your question? Um, who's the worst at corpsing, and were there any scenes in particular that were really hard to get through because of that? Patterson Joseph. He plays Johnson. He plays Johnson. He's, he is yeah, by far the worst at corpsing. And there was a, an occasion when he was, it was a meeting, he was chairing a meeting in JLB. I wasn't even there. And, and, and there was quite, quite a lot of people in the scene, which always means in peep shows, a nightmare to film. And he decided it was, he rightly decided it was funny when he said the word Frankfurt. If he went, <laughs> if he went Frankfurt. And, Frankfurt? Uh, it's in the middle of a normal English yeah, sentence. I, just, just so you guys back. need to realise that I'm going to Frankfurt. <laughs> it's just hilarious. And, but, having, but he just corpsed himself. Yeah, having lit upon that idea, he was then unable to do it again without <laughs> that. And then it got, and then it sort of spread, spread like a like a bacterial infection <laughs> across the whole scene because it got to the point where he would start thinking in advance that he was going to say Frankfurt <laughs> or going to say it normally or not going to be able to, and that would start him laughing. And then there'd be the one where he's not laughing, he's keeping it together, and everyone else starts <laughs> laughing because they, they're, they're so nervous that he's going to start laughing. That was, yeah, that really, and that then, got to the point. And then everyone gets kind of angry. Yeah, yeah, you've got to different, <laughs> they're People a want time. to stop laughing, but, but they're just... <laughs> 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 We're running over. <laughs> yeah, we want to go home. So that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, difficult. But also when uh, in the, the attic, uh, not attic, the upstairs bit of the church and the wedding. Oh, yeah, we both went. Um, when, the, when, Jer when Jeremy's yeah. ordered to piss himself. Um, <laughs> and they had a contraption that um, basically there was a, a water tank and a, a, ho a little tube that went down into this area. And then there was the art department guy going, mm, like, <laughs> and suddenly. And it was just the, it, it was the fact that it went everywhere. Also, the, the, the sound of liquid hitting a wooden floor was just so perfectly how you'd imagine someone pissing <laughs> yeah. himself to it sound was, like. It was we really both, realistic. We both had a it lot was, of trouble yeah. with that. And, that, and that's, of course, that's, that, that was very annoying to everyone because at the, po the point where they've sort of gone, go on the pissing yourself contraption, if you don't get that take, then they have to, the trousers have to come off <laughs> and, uh, you know, be I dried. Have to, I have and to be blown you, dry. Yeah, and the, and, the whole, and the whole, that bit of the attic floor has to be dried with hair dryers. Yeah. So there's a sort of 45-minute yeah. reset on the pissing. It took ages. Mm. <laughs> I'm surprised you went more method. I, I went to see um, Jane Horrocks play Lady Macbeth once, and she pissed oh, herself on stage yeah. every night. I've heard and about her. And literally in filming, that's harder. I've heard that about her. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's very moving. <laughs> Okay, another question. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Um, I, I was going to ask a very similar question about whether you wrote characters and then find that you're writing Jeremy and Mark, but that was asked brilliantly, so I won't do that. Um, when you're writing... Um, Let's some, let it go. Uh, could, or could <laughs> I just get a quick one in? When you were writing, so there's a lovely bit of dialogue in that, in that episode with the C. Bream and artichoke. How long do you sit trying different... Because the, the references for me are what, what are so brilliant, that they're, they're so well done. How long do you sit there going, Turbot Avocado? <laughs> Uh, da, da. <coughs> and my last question is, should I suck mummy's finger? <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that one, obviously, but answer to the other two would be good. <laughs> we, sp we do spend quite a long time figuring out sometimes the right words, don't we, in sentences, like Freiburg to ages to come up with. That, that, <laughs> that was brilliant, because I saw that episode where the glass took a long time to come from wherever it I was. I think you wikipedia the glass-producing yeah. cities. Yeah, so it was. I, think I had so a smug middle-class laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think there's often they're just, it's first draft, and it's one of, Samurai does it, and it, it sticks, and then other ones are like, oh, fuck, you know, it, Let's go through all the Bond films. What's funniest? Anna Twirl. Is Octopussy a bit on the nose and a bit what you'd expect? Or should it be Goldfinger? That's really what you'd want. And, you know, so you do, we do sometimes obsess for a long time, yeah. and other times it just it feels right the first time. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And other times we just Wikipedia it. Where's the, where, where does glass come from? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I th the line about Sea Bream and Artichokes that was, is actually 
cut down in the edit. It, it was as originally scripted. It was uh, we sit around watching uh, Civilization Clark. with Kenneth Clark and, and eating complicated things like sea bream and artichoke, <laughs> and which I mean sea bream and artichoke. Uh, uh, but I, I slightly missed the phrase complicated <laughs> things. <laughs> I think Mark Davis, the editor's here. Maybe we can just get him to go back and <laughs> yeah. Chat. Mark could yeah. just take him out back and beat the hell out yeah. of him. <laughs> 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 okay, next question, uh, Sarah up there. Um, do you guys have a s proper story arc for the character of Pe Pedge? Or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is he still working at HMV? Is his houseboat still moored at Rotterdam? Or just, uh, <laughs> just one. We do, we, do learn, we do learn something new about Pedge yeah. in episode three, actually. He does get a mention. We, yeah. yeah. Although, we don't meet Paige. We don't meet Paige. Sorry. But Paige, what do we know? He was in Rotterdam and he, did have a, he had a dog, didn't he? Because that was, <laughs> it must because there was the phrase, who wanked off Pedge's dog oh, for yeah. a fiver? Somebody, yeah. somebody wanked off Pedge's dog for a fiver. And Pedge didn't. Pedge. Did? Gog wanked Gog. off Pedge's dog for a fiver. Yeah. Pedge didn't wank off If we off all stay here all night, we might be able to remember the yeah. whole series. Yeah. Yeah. In case it goes. Mm. <coughs> of People, course, yes, because Gog yes. used to be, was bullied by Jeremy That's and then right, yeah. started to bully I him. Get, I've got a lot, a lot of tweets about Pedge over the years, mm. like when's Pedge coming back? I get kind of annoyed Comes because back. he's not really like a person. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a word. <laughs> but I'm also he's quite pleased people word. care, but it's quite bizarre. But it was, well, Big Sue's was like Pedge, was a, was a reference. Yeah. Just, but, and then, and then yeah. he's decided to, to make her a real character. <laughs> so, you know, who we knows, did, maybe. We did, we did discuss meeting Pedge, didn't we, in the series yeah. when there was, yeah. But we don't, but we do find out some interesting backstory. We mm. do. Maybe when the show comes back, it'll centre around Pedge. <laughs> it'll be all about Pedge, the yeah. spin-off. Yeah. Well, if you're going to be yeah. written by Blackwell, we're going to write Pedge. Yeah. <laughs> you're furious with them, aren't you? Uh, okay, next question. Um, yes. Oh, what do, do you, you get? What? How, how do you, how get, do you that get that shirt, shirt so clean? clean. <laughs> um, I'm actually feeling that my, my I had dinner earlier with Sam, and a, 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 a sort of a light patina of grease ended up on my shirt from a, a, an unwise placing of a fork. So I, I feel I'm not I'm not worthy of the clean shirt designation. It wasn't um, your fork placement. It was a sizzling steak thing. Yeah, with, yeah. Did they cook it at the table? No, but they brought <laughs> it. They brought it sizzling to the table. It was, it was slight activity food. Okay. It was a, a touch of knickerbocker glory, you know. <laughs> a, a bit of ooh, you're having that. Um, yeah, but so. Um, but I think I think Mark. <laughs> Um, I think Mark just uses, you know, a, a decent uh, detergent, you know. <laughs> probably so. Probably supermarket own brand because he doesn't like to be fleeced. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm stunned that line has survived as long as it has. <laughs> it's actually a convoluted. Yeah, the, 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 the little kid who was Sunny Muslim, the actor who played the series one, came back in series five, I think. To yeah. Yeah. By which time he had become an adult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The satisfying thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm not quite sure how much longer we've got, so if someone could let me know by the magic of telepathy. Um, but next question. Hello, yes, um, I just wanted, um, you mentioned film earlier, um, and, but I actually have two questions, so, I'm, so instead of being greedy, I'm going to try and link them in a really inappropriate sort of way, in a convoluted way. Um, first of all, about the film, and then secondly, um, which of Jeremy's um, or Jez's massively inappropriate girlfriends was his favourite? And if a film were to come back, which one would she be in? <laughs> What, who, who was what, my favourite or Jeremy's favourite? Uh, your favourite, sorry. My you tried both. Can you do as you yes. do and then as Jeremy? Yeah. Uh, oh. Mm. I, uh, <laughs> Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, Nancy. Jeremy's kind of forgotten. I mean, Jeremy's in love with whoever he's in love with at, at this moment. I mean, he really lives in the, I mean, Nancy was, was a big deal. But then, I, oddly enough, I watched um, the first two episodes of Series 6 today with Elena. Um, and Elena was uh, terrific. Uh, <laughs> character. Uh, she also looked like a Bond girl. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, he's always had these girlfriends who are much better looking than me. Um, so it's in that in that beautiful sexist way that we have on television. Um, but they've, they've still been my age. Uh, there hasn't been a whole. You know, maybe when we come back when we're fifty or sixty, we'll have girlfriends who are twenty-five. Yeah. Um, and uh, that'll be more 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 a traditional sitcom. Um, <laughs> My favourite, I mean, big, Sophie Winkleman, uh, 
funny person and a uh, very mm. funny character. Uh, but, yeah. I've got two words for you. What was it? Mental, mental posho. Yeah. Uh, and she, uh, yeah, she yeah. really embodied that. And, the and the, yeah, the relationship she then developed with Johnson, I found. Yes. When they were in that house, and, and one, I yeah. think one of my favourite lines in the whole nine series is Johnson shouting from upstairs, "Suze, where's the big scissors?" <laughs> Spoke of a certain sort of domestic cow. <laughs> when a lion gets a reaction like that, do you are you ever tempted to say, "Yeah, that was mine," <laughs> or do you just take no, the credit? No, I can't remember who wrote that. Which That's is a great thing about partnership, as you I, do I, forget. I find it just it's it's very very it's just very nice to hear people who know the show so well. I can't say how yeah, nice yeah. it is, but um, oh, but I feel that J uh, Jeremy really loves Nancy. Don't you think? <coughs> yeah, he yeah. hasn't referred to her ever again. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help. <laughs> I can't help <laughs> noticing. <laughs> she doesn't come up. Yeah. It's too painful. Too painful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he talks about her a lot in the scenes that aren't televised. That's right, yeah. <laughs> in his yeah. sleep. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I was just wondering, um, could you ask your Blackberry pack, but like you're, a lady, you're in a lady's voice? You're filming the answering to your question. <laughs> Please. So, sorry, well, ask, ask... Could you ask your Blackberry pack, but like a lady in a lady's oh, voice? <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> You're, a, you're actually turning me in, into basically a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, what we do generally, yeah. but there are normally uh, bigger cameras. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to judge you, man. Yeah. Okay, can I have my blackberry? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I am. Um, I am so fucking sorted for Panto now. Who's <laughs> <laughs> kidding me? Okay, we have time for two more questions, so raise your hands, fight each other, make them good ones. Who's next? Um, sir, you there win the um, <laughs> monochrome shirt with your hand. No, 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 you're scratching your head. That's not very good. You've got a guy there with a the microphone, Julie. Okay, sorry, person with the microphone. You first, and then, sir, you're last. That'd Thank be brilliant. You. Thanks. Um, <laughs> me and my wife really, really love all the sort of random things that Jez and Mark say to each other. So things like, there ain't no Quim likes to party, like Quim down in Darty. Uh, someone's already mentioned the old dude brothers, and there's many, many more. Just wondering, where, where do they come from? Are they just completely random, or are they references to something, or where do they come from? They come from our stupid, stupid brains. <laughs> it's a difficult question to answer. They're written. They're written by us, and, they, and we think of them. So they're not totally <laughs> random. Uh, and, but yeah, I guess, I guess it's, it's a nice thing about Sam and I's uh, writing partnership that we feel able to say stupid things and, and, and not have the other one go, well, that's stupid. That, that's really stupid. You've gone over the edge now. <laughs> what I I mean, like... In the pilot, and, you, and, the, and, and you, you, as you were saying, we were all shitting ourselves and, you know, we were nowhere and this was a big shot and we could really screw it up. And you called a major character Super Hands, <laughs> which I just think is magnificent. <laughs> and, and it was years before it was Super... Is it Hands? Oh, I've okay, I've seen it written down now. It's Hands. <laughs> all right, fine. And it's two words. It's not one, and you know, and it's just why, and it's, and it's just, it's just fucking great. Um, who else would do that? You're out of your mind. Yeah, Matt, Matt King tells a, a, a funny story about a carol service he was at. <laughs> well, he was at so, uh, I remember this. Yeah, he was at a carol service with his wife and children a few years ago, and you know, nice outdoor carol service, nice Christmassy event. Everyone's feeling very festive, and someone spots him and shouts, Oi, Scissorans! <laughs> and then the bloke next to the bloke that shouted, Oi, Scissorans, is mortified and goes, It's Superans, you cunt! <laughs> which, in Matt's view, oh. was more inappropriate to the atmosphere <laughs> of the carol service than getting his character's name so wrong. Right. <coughs> <laughs> but just, he was so embarrassed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, um, yes, the gentleman in the monochrome shirt, follow that. Oh, thank you. Um, I was just wondering, I mean, Peep Show is one of the most kind of eminently quotable TV shows, and I know you said it kind of informs the way you act and you write. Do you ever find yourself, for example, telling someone off when they combine a metric and imperial system, or talking about water Lego for plumbing? Like, does that ever come up in your kind of everyday conversation? Any Peep Show lines? Well, I, I've, I, don't think, I don't think we say Peep Show lines, but unfortunately, I do... I hear echoes of Mark's thoughts <laughs> in my own head, and, and certainly some of the specific, you know, uh, fastidious worries he has are, are, are the sort of thing I also obsess over. Like, like the euro? Sorry? Uh, like the euro. I, I, d I don't actually obsess over the euro, but, <laughs> but, um, but certainly, you know, a lot of, I mean, we've talked a lot about his, you know, his big um, Radio 4 speech, as I call it, on the episode when everyone's been tripping and he's been pretending to be, and he sort of goes, I'm it's all normal, I'm turning on Radio 4, um, it's, you know, it's only because of the miracle of consumer capitalism you're not all lying in a ditch uh, with rotten teeth dying, although uh, it, that now sounds very pre-credit crunch, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but yes, no, I, I, I've, I've never actually uh, echoed his specific words or thoughts, but definitely, th there's definitely elements of my horrible brain in his, I think, <laughs> even horribler brain. <laughs> and Rob, what about you? I have no relationship with Jeremy's no. thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and I think on that note, we have to end it. Please show wild appreciation. Yeah. For Thank, you. Thank you very much.